NBA insider Mark Stein has revealed massive details on the Knicks and the Walker Kessler situation and why Danny Ainge was just asking for way too much from the New York Knicks, which is what kind of led to the Carl Anthony Towns trade indirectly. And we're going to break it all down. So, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to jump right into the video because. As we all know, the New York Knicks had interest in Walker Kessler, and the whole chance of that happening went right out the window once the New York Knicks made the blockbuster trade to acquire Carl Anthony Towns from the Minnesota Timberwolves, trading a first-round pick, trading Julius Randle, trading Dante DiVincenzo in a move that some have criticized, some like, and it all kind of led to basically there being zero chance of Walker Kessler getting on the New York Knicks, and Mark Stein broke this down. Here's what he had to say. Stein mentioned that before coming to terms on the blockbuster swap with Minnesota for Carl Anthony Towns, mere days before the start of training camp, New York made multiple trade runs at Utah's Walker Kessler to fill its well chronicle void at center. Now, it's believed that, Wa that Utah would have wanted at least two future first-round picks for Walker Kessler, and after the Knicks had exhausted much of their remaining cachet of draft picks on the trade, with McHale, or the trade for Mikhail Bridges, the New York Knicks, well, this Walker Kessler situation, it went right out the window as the New York Knicks obviously were not going to trade two first rounders for Walker Kessler. They knew that the move for Carl Anthony Towns was something on the table that they could pull off. They've been trying to trade for Towns since Leon Rose got to the team. They've had interest in Carl Anthony Towns. It has not at all went away. And I mean, then the sirens came out. The New York Knicks traded for Carl Anthony Towns. And everything changed. They decided, hey, though we might still have interest in getting more rim protection, it's not going to be in the form of Kessler. Because Kessler, just he just costed too much. And that's an absurd asking price for Walker Kessler. I understand he's young. I understand that he's a good player. But still, all that is a lot to ask for. Now... Last season, Walker Kessler put up eight points per game with seven rebounds, blocked two and a half shots per game, and got half a steal per game while shooting 65% from the field. Very positive player when you look at the advanced metrics. Walker Kessler is a great center. He's a great rim protector. He's a great player. It's great. He's nice. Trading for Towns was a better idea. I mean, look at it, guys. Like, it's Carl Anthony Towns or Walker Kessler. Yes, you gave up Julius Randle, but you got more spacing. You got a team that fit better around Jalen Brunson and OG and McHale and Towns. That core four guys the New York Knicks have brought in now, the team fits beautifully. Walker Kessler and Julius Randle were not going to fit as well together. And giving up two first-round picks for Walker Kessler is absolutely insane. The Knicks had to give one of their remaining first-rounders. They had two remaining first-rounders. They had to give one to trade for Kessler or to trade for Towns along with trading Julius and DiVincenzo. And this led to the Knicks basically understanding that if they want to go out there and get a rim protector that's not Mitchell Robinson, it's going to be on a cheaper deal. Like trading Precious Sichua for Nick Richards is something that I've wanted to see happen or something essentially along those lines. Now, I don't understand the point of doing that. While you have Towns, you're not in desperate need of rim protection. You have Mikhail Bridges. You have OG Ananobi. You still have good defense. You have Josh Hart. You have Deuce McBride. You have good defense with or without an elite rim protector. And the Knicks do have an elite rim protector still. Once he comes back, Mitchell Robinson is a phenomenal rim protector. He's better than these stats show because he was playing with injury for a good portion of last season. Now, five and a half points, eight and a half rebounds that before he got injured, his rebounds were at 10, five offensive, five defensive. Best offensive rebounder in basketball. He also blocked a shot per game, stole a steal per game, numbers that were higher when he was not playing injured. The man is a great player. He doesn't foul as much as he used to. Mitchell Robinson absolutely gets the job done as a rim protector. But until then, you have other players. You have Precious Achua, who last season put up 7.5 and, and 6.5, and blocked a shot per game, held Joel Embiid to one point in the fourth quarter of game four of the playoffs last season. Precious has shown that he could hold his own despite being an undersized center. Everyone loves Precious Achua. Precious is still the next Giannis. He's still better than Bam. It's all still happening, guys. It's it's just one of these things that you look at Precious and you realize he's the greatest player of all time. But no, in all seriousness, Precious Achua can hold his own. Jericho Sims had a very nice game yesterday 
against the Charlotte Hornets. Sims, and I understand it's a preseason game. It's not some league-changing game or anything. It doesn't mean the New York Knicks have some superstar in Jericho Sims. They don't. But, I mean, when you look at Kessler's contract, yeah, it's good. Of course, he's going to cost a good amount. And you have Jericho Sims going out here showing that that hard work might have paid off in the offseason. I mean, 10 rebounds, blocked a shot, looked good in 21 minutes played. He might end up being more than just a situational backup, a.k.a. a third string, for the New York Knicks. He absolutely would be able to get that done. It would be huge for the team. It adds more depth at center. The Knicks are going to end up signing Ariel Huckporty to a full-term contract. The Knicks are going to be just fine at big man. They did not have to go out there and acquire Walker Kessler. It's just something that would have been nice. It wasn't a necessity. And the Knicks decided, hey, one of what makes us way better than going for Walker Kessler is going out there and trading for Carl Anthony Towns. This makes us way better. Yeah, we're giving up an all-star, all-NBA player. Yeah, we're giving up a phenomenal shooter in DiVincenzo. But it doesn't mean the Knicks are a lost cause because they didn't get Walker Kessler. I understand why fans wanted him, and I think that the Knicks would have been able to develop him into a better player than he is today, which is the fear that Kessler has already hit his ceiling, that there's no more room to grow, that the player we see today is the player we're going to see for the rest of Kessler's prime. The Knicks, I think, could have gotten more out of Walker Kessler the way that the Jazz might be able to. But at the same time, are we really going to be hung up on this? I don't think so. I'm not. I don't really care at all. The Knicks have other options. As I mentioned, Jericho Sims was a situational backup. Hardly got minutes last season. But when he did, shot 69% from the field. Solid rebounder in very limited minutes getting three rebounds. We're going to see him in a bigger role until Mitchell Robinson returns. The Knicks have a way to remedy the fact that they don't have room protection. There's not too many skilled big men in the Eastern Conference. There's Embiid, yes. Who else is there? Who are we really worrying about other than Joel Embiid? Bam's not going for 40 points. He's probably the second best center in the Eastern Conference. It's either Bam or Towns is the second best center. Yeah, Porzingis is good. It's not the Porzingis who's going for 28 points per game like he was in the beginning of that Knicks season, what, seven years ago now? Like, the Knicks do not have to worry that much about rim protection when you have Mikhail Bridges, when you have OG Ananobi, when you have Josh Hart, when you have Deuce McBride. When you have phenomenal on-ball defense, you have a little bit to spare on rim protection, especially when you have a rim protector on roster who's just injured. He's going to be back. Mitch is going to be back. He's going to come back. Is there really worth understanding that you're going to have to pay Walker Kessler in two years when you have a lot of other guys who are due for contract extensions in two years. It just does not make sense to me, guys. But let me know what you think down below. Like this video, turn on post notifications, subscribe if you haven't. Have a great day. Make sure to tune in every Friday at 6 p.m. for Nick's Digest Happy Hour with me. And we're usually going to have Matt, our other host, on that too. And also we're going to get Darielle on it soon and a bunch of other creators. You don't want to miss it. Have a great day and go Nick's.